behalf of the Board of Directors of the Hair Consortium, I would like to welcome you to our best practice showcase celebrating technology for innovation for the Spanish success in higher education. My name is Karen Rivera and I will be in charge of introducing the speakers for this breakout session. This session is being recorded. The presenter will let you know whether you will be able to address your questions at any time during the presentation or after the presentation has finished. This presentation will be delivered in English. Uh, we will appreciate that you change your mobile phone to vibration or silent mode in order to have your full attention to this section. Finally, we will distribute the evaluation form. Please make, make sure to complete it before the session is over and hang in before you leave this room. Now we are ready to start. The presenter of this session is uh, Dr. Marva Craig and Dr. Michael Hutmaker from the Borough of Manhattan Community College. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, you know, we've been looking at services through the years for that we provide to students, and we kind of found ourselves locked in doing what we've always done in the same way we've always done it. So at BMCC, we stopped for a while and we said, how can we change what we're doing to students? So with um, and for students. So we're moving here from the traditional to some kind of non-traditional approaches. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we tell you about that, let's tell you about BMCC. We have different areas of study at the college. We have arts and science business, and we've been adding and will continue to add a lot more. So these are some of the areas in which our students study. Um, like most, okay, I hope this doesn't happen too often. Like most colleges, we have more female students than male students. I think we moved from a Mac to this, so I'm not sure if it's showing in the same way. It's, it doesn't seem to be, but it's no problem, you've got it. Um, BMCC is a part of the City University of New York, and so we're in different boroughs. So other schools may be here and say, that's not geographically correct, that's not where we are in the borough. It's okay. We just put them there to show that they're in different boroughs. We're in Manhattan. We're in Tribeca. So while we're in Tribeca, it's, our, most of our students are not from tr the Tribeca area. They, so in Tribeca, it's a very rich neighborhood, and we have the film festival. We're closely connected to some of the stars there. Like I see some stars on the screen here. <laughs> Tribeca stands for Triangle Below Canal Street. So we have a triangle below Canal Street, so they claim. We don't quite see it, but we make believe it's there. Charge more money and you can change anything, right? <laughs> so. Okay. So if you go back real quick to the Tribeca, this is probably some of the most expensive waterfront property in the country. You don't call it beachfront because there really is no beach. Not like here. So that is a rhetorical question for, uh, for us to discuss. But for college faculty, staff, administrators, what is a common goal? when we work with our students. What's one of the over, overarching experiences we want our students to experience? From an administrative staff and faculty, what are some of the things we want to make sure our students do or have as experience? The MCC, you can answer. <laughs> Retention, persistence. Retention and persistence. But good grades. Good grades. Success. Successful. Internships. Internships. Positive learning outcomes. Positive. But how do they get to positive learning outcomes 
and success and retention. What are some of the ways they get there? What do we have to do as staff, faculty? Oh. Mentors, coaching. Okay, so research has shown that connecting to just some of the ideas that we just talked about and having the involvement and building those personal relationships will have a positive impact on their retention, college experience, and overall success. So that's what we're going to be focusing about today's conversation. And some of our researchers that we've talked about, for those that have studied uh, the, the field of student development, uh, these names sound familiar. Tinto, uh, you know, he talks about you know, having students that are academically and socially integrated into the campus community. That will increase their commitment to their college. They want, they're going to want to stay. They're going to want to succeed and be a part of that. And that was, that's probably most likely to, to lead to their success and ultimate graduation. Ku and Pike say, talk about involvement, any type of involvement, co-curricular activities, leadership positions, that has, a, again, a positive correlation to their retention and their academic success. Aston, I think he's one of the, you know, call him one of the grandfathers of uh, student development, but all of his research really focuses on you know, the co-curricular student involvement leads to their student success. And Havley, uh, more recently, talks about interactions that students have with uh, concerned individuals on campus, their, their faculty, their advisors, their peer mentors, um, those, those connections, that has a direct influence on undergraduate uh, retention. So that was really focused on undergraduate experience. So it's those connections they make. That's what's going to really lead to their success uh, in college. So a whole summary of you know, the, those four and others that we didn't include is that students are more likely to remain enrolled and continue with the college and have successful academic progress. They're, they're, they're going to keep that pace going. Uh, when they feel that they matter, that people are looking out for them. They don't feel like just, you know, uh, someone sitting, a nameless name in the classroom or on campus. And some of the answers you gave us, those are some of the reasons that students will feel like they matter. Exactly. So here at the MCC, you know, this will be different for each one of your own campuses, but our, our uh, challenge is we have a campus of over 27,000 students. So how do you give students a sense of connection to the campus when it's that large. So when we have the large campus, what we do is look, they come from all over the world. They come from all over the US. They come from the different boroughs in Manhattan, in, in New York. And then they walk through the doors of our campus. They have their experience in the classroom and we want them to wind up as graduates. But how do we take them from this broader area of life and let them continue to feel like they matter and wind up as a graduate of the college. For some, it's taken the experience. For some of them, you know, they might be geographically from all over the place, but the feeling is that they are, you know, for BMCC, it might feel like a big place for them. So we want to personalize it, which was mentioned earlier today. Uh, make, make sure that the students have this personal experience and that they get to the end, and that their experience, that they matter, that they have that individual uh, experience and feeling. So size matters for students. Some students will select a college because it's a large institution, small institution. Some will select, it's a medium size, that's what they're looking for. And some will select because it's a large college. But in the end, some students just want the feel of the college. And that's what we try to get at BMCC, is to give them this small feel and to make sure that they feel like individual students. So we look at some of the traditional approaches. As educators, we use the one-size-fits-all model. So the focus is often on the service, not on the student. We make sure that we have some services, we must have them, but we never really assess how they're helping the students. Some colleges, we've tried the, the, some models where we say one size, you can do the one-stop model. You can just stop here and get all your services. But even though we're doing the one-stop model, 
We're not really changing the service. We're only changing the location in which we provide um, the services to our students. So the services become convenient for us as a kind, but it's not personalized for our students. So over the years in higher ed, we all have tutoring. We all have peer mentoring. We all have career development, kind of. And we all say we should have counseling, if not on the campus, off the campus. And that's how we say we do business. But do we assess the impact on the students? We don't really know. And the students didn't ask us for what some of them either. Some of them, that's how we do business. So we have developed, though, over the years, some special academic programs. So one of them is at NCUNY called ASAC, where we select some students, provide uh, tutoring, make sure they have the one-on-one -on -one advisor, make sure there is no difference in the amount that they pay for their college tuition and what have you. Or we all know here, so those are programmings that are touching the individual students. More recently, the Learning Acad um, the Academy in CUNY, we have COPE and the... They the work with students that are on public assistance. It's both academic and you know, uh, employment related. And we also have the CUNY START, and this is a pre-enrollment. That means if before you enter college, we try to get you to finish all your remediation. So these are some changes that are being made at nationally or at the university level. And then we have the special populations that we've always provided services to. And these are our international students, our veterans, and more recently, because after post-Vietnam group, then we stopped, and then the wars again, and then we started again with the Veterans Center. The scholarship office, we focus on the best and the brightest. We're now adding leadership to the service that we provide um, to the students. So that's one assessment and learning. Urban Mail Initiative, and this one is important. And the reason why it is, if you notice, we had more men, more women than men in our colleges now. And when we have more women than men, we do what we did for the women when we didn't have enough of them we now should focus on our male students getting them back into college, right? So uh, how do we let students know that we know who they are without going through all the traditional programs or programs that your government or state says that you must have, right? How do we notice when there is a change in their academic record? How do we connect college personnel with our students, and how do we listen to their stories one student at a time? We all know that every student has a story, right? So we're doing a new approach, right, Michael? Yep. And the new approach we're doing is we're creating these programs, and we're letting a lot of what we're creating be driven by the students through data, assessment, and our observation of our students. So the programs that we create are supplemented by the wraparound services. In the end, we want a holistic <coughs> approach to serving the students. So some of the traditional services that we talk about, they will come into play as well as we serve these students. And it, the whole goal is much of what you said. We're customizing it so that we'll retain our students and it will lead to graduation. We call it good teaching. <laughs> so Michael will tell you a little bit more about boutiquing. Okay, so for those, you know, boutiques, small, individual, customized store. So that's the concept that we borrowed from retail to bring it to our campus so we can work on these special uh, groups of students that we found through our data, through our conversations, uh, th and observations of students coming to campus. So we open these boutiques as the needs arise. So again, looking at the data, talking to the students, uh, just observing them, and hearing from the 
colleagues from our campus, what they're seeing. Uh, we assess you know, how do we develop these new groups. So we identify, we're, de we're identifying and grouping students in non-traditional ways. You know, we've always grouped them as international students, as veterans, as first year, but we're looking at it in a little bit different way. You know, we're using that, but we're going deeper, we're digging deeper. So we're supporting all groups, from the top students, the students that are ex excellent, the students that are doing okay, but sometimes they stumble either academically or personally. Uh, identifying and assisting those students that are just having troubles right from the start, both academically and or you know, in their personal uh, life to get, get through college. And also those that have stopped out. You know, we, we still continue to work with those that have left us and we try to reach out and bring them back you know, to help continue with their uh, academic goals. So some of the programming. Uh, the goals of the program and what we want to do, we want to create a, a sense of community uh, with those students, both with each other and with, with the college. Uh, we want to create opportunities uh, to build those connections with those students that are in those, these unique groups that may not naturally be cohorts. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. And also develop support and, get, and pathways for them to navigate a college campus or college system that may be foreign to them. Uh, as we see a lot of our students are, are first generation they're, they've never experienced college or their family hasn't, so they don't have that at home uh, support or, uh, I guess, expertise to guide them through what college is like. So, so some of the targeted programming we've done, you know, these are some of the boutiques that we've opened recently at the AMCC. Uh, we don't have individual offices. These are uh, groups of people that work together, uh, predominantly at student affairs, but we work closely with the other uh, offices around campus. And well, I'll explain what these, these groups are. So for instance, we have a, a small group called the BMCC Achievers. These are our 4.0 students. And of course, we always celebrate those students that succeed. We spend a lot of time on them. Uh, but it's usually just recognizing them, giving them awards, and saying thank you. And if they're eligible, they get scholarships. But we decided to bring them together. And, and when we bring them together, we, we kind of have a program where we not only celebrate them, but we have a mocktail hour after the uh, recognition ceremony. And we have to do a mocktail because we can't do a cocktail, <laughs> because they can't drink on campus. So in, in the mocktail, they sit around and they talk to each other and tell each other what they're doing and come up with plans on what they want to do, the clubs they want to form and what have you. And then we keep communicating with them throughout the semester. We hire them on campus to serve as uh, peer mentors. We tell them when there are any programmings and what have you. So they know that they're in touch and they have a name. They are the achievers. It's, you know, we bring them on the campus, we use them as tutors, student leaders. We connect them through those wraparound services like we mentioned before. We make sure they make uh, those connections to career development, looking for internships, work with our academic affairs to find uh, research opportunities with our faculty. So again, it's not just sitting there saying, great job, you know, here, here's your little certificate, it's that and more. And it's, it's one of the few times that you're in a room, with, as VP always uh, addresses them, we're in a room of perfection. So. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's working with those students that are the high achievers. And sometimes you think we don't really have to do with those, but it's always good to work with those students. Uh, Petri is a grant funded uh, program that we have to help students that are facing uh, short term financial needs. And these are the students that have been evicted, uh, they have medical issues, they can come to us and uh, request emergency funds to get them over that, yeah, that hump for that semester to, so they continue. They don't have to stop out. Uh, and those are students that are usually doing well academically, so we know that they will want. They don't want to leave school. They're doing well, so we work with them. We give them this financial uh, assistance to get over that hump, pay that bill, uh, pay the rent, um, whatever it may be. But again, we go and connect them with those <coughs> services. But we didn't before when we had the program initially. One of the the programs. Um, the outline of what we need to do for the students from the donor was they must graduate, they must do well. Mm -hmm. So initially when we started the program, we just gave it to all the students. And then we had to respond to the donors that mm -hmm. some of the students aren't doing well. Mm -hmm. So we changed the requirements mm -hmm. internally so that we can continue to get the funding. However, we didn't leave all the students out there and say, well, no students who are not doing well will not get money. 
we went to our foundation and they do not ask the same level of questioning and we get money from them to help the students who may not be on that track to graduate. So they, they, that's how we got the Petri Fund. And so they talk to one person, and that one person will make sure that they write a thank you letter to the donor mm -hmm. of the funds. Mm -hmm. And the donor says, yo, you really don't have to do this. And we say, we have to. They must learn to say thank you, mm -hmm. right? And so they learn to say thank you, and not only that, then we keep following them and make sure they're enrolled each semester, and so they know the name of their person, Maxine Hunter. That's who we go to when there's a an need. And that's a good example of uh, assessing the program as we go through it. You know, the original uh, proposal was just give the money to students that need it, but then we had to assess it, changed it, so that it's, it's evolved. Uh, PASS is another group of students. These are students that are, have to file an appeal because of Title IX violation with the financial aid. Uh, they've either, uh, their GPA has gone below the requirement or their pace and progression has slowed down. So we work with them, all students that go on this to get their financial aid back, they have to file an appeal at the college. So they do that, we give them workshops on how to do that uh, you know, in a more efficient manner. So they're more likely to get those appeals and that has led to more appeals being submitted and accepted. Uh, but again, it's the continued outreach to the students to make sure that they don't go back on to uh, probation or, get, or for, fall short of their Title IV Because we could just have them filing appeals and say, you filed the appeal, now you're back. Mm -hmm. But we continue with the students for them to understand that we care and what it means for them to get financial aid. Because if they can't get financial aid, they can't remain in school. So these are some of oh, the adjustments that we're doing as we get the state and the federal aid and as we get different students. Yeah, another, another group we're working with are the DREAM students. Uh, they're, they're undocumented, that have received the DREAM US scholarships. Uh, they're undocumented students. Uh, RISE, this is an interesting group. This is a group of students that are academically in good standing. But we've noticed, uh, you know, by drilling down in the data, that their GPA had a precipitous fall from one semester to the next. So they went from a, a 3.0 to a 2.5. Now that's a major drop. That means something happened that semester. So we follow up with these students and see what happened. Was it personal? Was it academic? And we make sure uh, that they get back up to that higher level of academic achievement. Now this is an interesting group because they're the ones who call us all the time and say, we didn't know that anyone noticed because they're still in good standing. How did you notice that my grade point average fell? So. And Safe and Success, this is a, a program that we work with uh, some uh, grants and local uh, financial corporations to help train our students with life skills. It's not just academic, it's uh, you know, how, to, how to own a, and operate a bank account, saving money, not using all their financial aid and using it in different ways to help them uh, meet all their financial obligations for the semester. So, like we said, uh, you know, this is ongoing as needs arise. So we found this need recently, the last semester or so. Uh, INC Boutique, it's coming soon. It's uh, under construction. Incomplete, we, we know the students, watch you, if uh, students are on, uh, get grades that are incomplete, they have a certain time frame to you know, finish the work, to get a, to get a grade. Uh, if they miss the deadline, it automatically turns into an F. So we saw that as a problem. So we're reaching out, we're going to start working with the students that have earned and not incomplete and make sure that they stay on pace to complete their academic work so those INCs don't become Fs. And uh, so that was, again, that was a need that we saw while we're talking to students, talking to our colleagues around campus. So again, boutiquing is creating services and touch points for each student, knowing what's going on in our student lives. Uh, like uh, VP said, you know, they didn't know that we noticed that they had a bad semester, even though they're still in, in good standing. It's connecting our students to people around campus and where to get those answers and concerns questions. They might not know who the right person is to get a, a ask for assistance for book loans uh, or, to, or to get a, a metro card a voucher. So we connect them. And you know, we're incorporating the latest technology. Uh, we're using our Hobson's Connect, Hobson's Retain. We're using our PeopleSoft's uh, uh, so, uh, databases to dig into this information and to make our outreach and our uh, review of these populations more uh, intense. And it's moving us from a traditional service model that we, that we talked about earlier to more of a student focus and focusing on the needs that students are presenting to us as they're coming to us. So again, boutiquing, we see three major 
components of it, the outreach, the data assessment, and the face-to-face -face connections. But we add technology to it, it really helps us with the uh, connections to them. So we add the technology, it increases our outreach. It finds us new populations to look at. And uh, there we go. Um, and it allows us to you know, use social media, use the Hobson's uh, retained to communicate with students. Uh, allows us to dig into the data that we already have on campus, but we're looking at it in different ways. And again, it enhances the face-to-face -to, -face to the students. You know, increase our communications to get them in and talk to us to find out what, what's going on in their lives. So creating boutiques. So we are identifying students. Again, using the data that we already have in the system. Uh, the financial aid, their educational vouchers. This is, works with students that have been in the foster care system. Uh, their GPA, their registration status, their immigration status, their financial needs. So we use, this data is already there. We're just looking at it in different ways and using technology to get us there. And getting students engaged. Uh, these are new programs. They've never heard of CARES or PACS because uh, they're not in the books as official programs or offices. So we have to go out and tell students about these services that we've created for them. So it involves doing outreach and recruitment. And especially with our new and first generation students, uh, they're not even aware that they may need assistance. They're not aware of what they're not aware of. So we have to you know, reach out to them uh, and connect them to the support services that you know, they didn't think a college would provide. Uh, so this is how we do the outreach and get them involved and engaged. So, so the outreach strategies, again, the traditional emails, we have RSVP websites. When we have these events, we use them so we can connect with them, get their information when they're responding to our activities. We have a call center that follows up for them. Obviously, social media is the, net, uh, the big thing of staying connected to them. Word of mouth. Um, you know, when students get money, when they get recognized, they'll tell their friends and so on. So that's a big uh, way of doing it. And of course, the traditional orientation sessions. So communications is key for the how do we communicate this? One of the things we do is every day we wish our students a happy birthday, right? So even though we have some of the boutique maybe programs they're in, we want to make sure every student is touched by us. So when they get their birthday wishes from me, it's customized with their name and say happy birthday to the person and there's a little gift box and what have you. And the students are responding in an unbelievable way. They thank me so much. They really appreciated the, the, the love signs, the thank you. Those are my favorite colors, would you? And these are the different types of thank yous that we get. And then one would write a long email. Oh my God, you know, and it is a big surprise for them that we actually say happy birthday to them every day. An interesting story. There was a, a young, uh, oh older, yes, an, an older student. And old, she came and she came in and she wanted to see the vice president who sent out the email. So um, she didn't have an appointment, but she said it would be short, so I invited her in. It turned out to be, as usual, very long. <laughs> Nothing is ever short with the students. So she came in and she said, you know, I got birthday wishes from you. I have two sons and no one called me, but the college sent one. And she couldn't believe, she wanted to understand how did I know So you never know how much you're touching a student with this simple little action. So this may not be one of our boutiques, but it is one way that we're saying give them that personal touch, customize. They, they matter. I mean, they felt like they matter. Right. The other thing we really believe in is branding. Aside from our logo, our college's motto, and let me see if this staff remembers it. Our college's motto, our tagline, the students know. So if I say, if I'm giving a speech and I say, you're going to pretend to be a student. Mm -hmm. If I say, start here, 
go anywhere. That's right. <laughs> and they all know that you go anywhere. So branding means a lot to us. So how do we brand? Let me give you an example. The foster care students on our campus in one of our boutiques. It's called CARES. So we give it CARES. It's comprehensive <coughs> assistance, retention, empowering. Who remembers that? So you use an acronym that you know they remember. How did we know? How do we know who our foster care students are? How do you know who your foster care students are? If they're getting, you know, federal aid. If they're getting federal aid, there's actually a question on the uh, FAFSA application that asks them this. How did we know? Because they're coming to get the ETV. And you say, how do they know to come to the financial aid for the ETV? So we went in, found that information, and it helped us to create the boutique cares, right? So we need now to come up with a logo. How do we come up with one? We ask the staff, because we're branded. Take a stab at it, staff. And they gave us kind of this. So we sent it to our public affairs, public affairs office. They it up. And public affairs says, OK, we looked at them, and we think you should use one of these. So they changed it. Which one do you think we selected? First one. Uh, <laughs> which one do you think we select? First one? First one? Mm -hmm. The second one? Over there? Uh huh. Which one we selected? Huh? The middle one. The middle one. The middle one. Middle one. You're from Puerto Rico? We're going to come here more often. <laughs> Somewhere there are some hands somewhere in somebody's local. Right. Somewhere, somewhere. Uh, then the second one, we think, oh, sometimes that blue will be hidden somewhere. So that's why we went for the, this one, the one we chose. So the heart is beating now because we really care. How? Oh. Okay. 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 So, so, but it doesn't do that on the paper. <laughs> You're disappointed now. <laughs> but, but it, okay. So, the bottom line is the bottom line is go oh, back. Very good. Okay. The the bottom line is we have to show the 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 kind of programming and from start to finish the communication. And, and that the student will recognize CARES, the faculty and staff will recognize it as well. Right. And you know, we've talked about all these different boutiques and these unique groups, you know, uh, you know the, the CARES students, uh, the students with the Petri, the 4.0s. You know, these students are all members of these other support services that we have. They get those additional support services, you know, through the special academic programs like the ASAP or the KIAP or the CD on our campus. Uh, the Cove and the Community Start. So they have those support service built in, but some of them fall into these boutiques. Same thing with the veterans, same thing with the international students. Um, you know, the, the, who else do we have? Uh, students with disabilities. Disabilities, yes. So you know, these students, they have those services there. And they're, you know, they're grouped in that way. But some of those students also can be grouped with Petri or Foster Cares or you know, the 4.0s. So they're getting services from their traditional offices, which have been a mainstay in a lot of campuses, over the last, you know, I guess, 20 or so years, they, you know, as, as the needs arise, but now they're also getting support services in a different way, and they're being connected to students that may have had similar experiences uh, that they wouldn't have known. They wouldn't know that there's other, there's, you know, a hundred other foster care students on campus. So, you know, we're bringing them together. They get to know each other as well. Uh, they didn't realize how many 4.0 students are in at BMCC. Uh, but, but when we put them in a room. You know, they see a, a fraction of it because the others are in class. <laughs> they can't always come to the events. So it's you know, these boutiques sort of they're, they're working with these established support services that we have, the, the established academic programs that we have. So these students, we're trying to touch them in as many different ways uh, again, make them feel that they matter 
in, in different avenues in different ways. And so what we've done is we've hired staff for generalists. They're not academic advisors, they're not counselors, they're generalists. Not just activities, and right. they're all and our goal is for them to listen to students and as they hear students and hear their concern, how can you suggest another boutique that we will build so that we can touch students in these different ways? But it doesn't mean we do not work very closely with advisement, with counseling. They're still there as our support. And sometimes when we build a boutique, we'll also move the boutique into an area because it belongs there more than it belongs in the <laughs> student affairs area, right? So we'll build it, but then we'll, we'll give it to others as well. And we anticipate boutiques to come and go. That's why we're hiring generalists, so they can be, you know, they can move into another you know, boutique, another role on campus and work with a different group of students. Because you know, you know, hopefully, you know, students will no longer need emergency funds, which will never happen. But you know, if that happens, we can work, move the people that are working with those students into another program. Students on probation. Hopefully, they'll never be a student on probation again. But we know that'll probably happen. So we, you know, we want to be able to uh, move students and staff around uh, to help out in different, in different boutiques. Now we understand that some of you may not be able to hire new people and then you're saying, well, this is not practical because we can't hire new staff like BMCC. So what you can do though is build the boutique in the programming that you already have with some of your areas. So like you have advisement, you can then say to the advisor, can you build in when students get incomplete grades, we communicate with them immediately. Or the students in foster care, you may identify and say, this student is on your workload and they're in foster care, so be more sensitive and send them to this service and that service. So you do not necessarily need a generalist to have your but, that, but that's how they start. They started as these working teams, people from various areas that are working with these, this group of students. And as the as the, we find that the group gets larger and larger, that that gives us um, an opportunity to, you know, when we are hiring new staff, to work how them assigned to these new roles. Uh, but it starts off as this collaborative approach with uh, colleagues within our division of student affairs and also outside in academic and even financial areas. So I don't, we don't want to go too much over our time because we, we recognize that others will have to come in. So, okay. so Are there any it's, questions? <laughs> okay. okay, this is Jeopardy. We are going to play Jeopardy. Now, we, we, this is assessment. Assessment, everything now is about what did you learn? Out, okay, so now you have to tell us what you learned. But before we do that, I do have some gifts here, and I'm gonna start off by giving away one of my gifts because you were one of the first persons in the room. Stacy, Stacy, no, not Stacy. Oh, what's Stacy? Yeah. Oh, you didn't know I know your name. I do know <laughs> your name, Stacy. Mm -hmm. You're one of the first persons in the room. And you stayed yeah. from beginning to end. So that's, <laughs> you're solid as a rock. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So we're going to play for, Michael, you're going to help me with this. We're going to play for t shirts, paperweight, jump drive, or the umbrella. All right? So. Yeah. Get a shirt first? We'll see. The t shirt first. Okay, I'm taking these out. These are all beautiful BMCC <laughs> memorabilia and each and every one made in China. <laughs> okay, every piece of item. So you know we got them at a very good price here, okay? Okay, so we're ready. Michael, you're looking at the audience, I'm looking at the screen. In the form of a question only, 
This is what Tribeca stands for in the form of a question. What is the triangle below Canal? Canal Street. Oh, thank you very much, sir. And Michael, he is one. I think we have different sizes here. Okay. okay. There you go. Where were pride? Start here? Uh -huh. Go anywhere. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. The next one is a junk drive. One of the boutiques currently opened at BMCC. What, what is CARES? What is CARES? Oh, I'm going to make CARES again. You know, um, and we'll also give you an umbrella. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, you get this one. The acronym for a program for students in foster care. Huh? Say it. You have to say it in the form of a question or to care <laughs> I'm Oh, yeah, say, yeah, just yeah. say what is care. So I'll help you. What is care? <laughs> what did she just say? She played for a jump drive. She played for a jump drive? Okay, give her a rock. <laughs> <laughs>